again, this is a little bit of a bad angle to see, but uh, you can at least watch me as I apply adhesives and things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is run all my tens leads. I don't have to worry about doing that later. Okay, so I got them to where, you know, they're not going to be in the way of that spider. Shim, just kind of twist it up, stick it in there. And uh, I'm using two shims. And then you want them on, you want them on opposite sides. So if this space right here where the shim stops, you want to put the next shim in where that space is on the opposite side if you're using multiple shims. Let's see. And just kind of press everything up in there. And now we're ready to drop it. Double check it's all fitting good before we do our final adhesive. And double check, this is very important. If you forget, you're really in a bad shape. Um, lining up the leads with the, the terminals. Got to double check that that happens. I get everything in there and line everything up. So you make sure everything's sitting down where it's supposed to be, and everything's lined up so that it's ready to be soldered when you're ready. Another thing with those shims is uh, you want to put enough shims inside that uh, when you have when you have the kit the, co the coil can't really slide on its own. It'll hold itself. You have to push it down to move it. So if I was to suspend this it would well it's a little heavy. You would need a uh, when the coil's on its own, usually, or just with the spider, the cone's a little bit heavy, but with the coil, it should just kind of hold itself there. Once you get this uh, cone on, it's it's gotten too heavy, but uh, with just the coil, it suspends itself, and then that's how you know you have enough space, um, gap space, with those shims. It's kind of a bad example now that I have the, the cone on, but I'm just letting you know, that's how you shim. And if you were to do individual shims like this you could do two or four depending on how big they are this is wide enough you could do two but you want them completely opposite from each other so it um, creates even spacing so uh, there you go so now we're going to get ready for the adhesives kind of try to keep your shims in there Do one final check that everything's clean. All your surfaces that you're gonna mount with, like uh, this rubber surround, you just make sure it's all clean. There's no dust Get your on adhesive, it. and you don't want to use a lot. You're just gonna lay a small bead. I'm not gonna be able to really show this on the camera since I don't want to tilt the basket and have the have the uh, the glue slide. But uh, I'll, I'll try to get pictures in if I can. But I gotta work really fast because this stuff is gonna try to set up. You just kind of smear it on there. You're not going to need a whole lot, but you want enough so that it bleeds through the spider. Because the spider is woven. I'm just kind of using the end of the, uh, the glue 
stick here to uh, smear it all, all over. I'm trying to make it a little bit even. So we've gotten started, it kind of just oozed out a little bit, but a little bit extra. And then for the spider we want to just try to start pressing that down too. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. So I put all the clamps I could find on this, because that stuff has a hard time setting up and it tries to peel back at the, at the surround a bit, it tries to peel back up. So I just let it sit, got a light on it, maybe it'll help, I don't know. Uh, so I thought I'd take time to uh, start soldering terminals. As you can see I've already done these two. And the idea is to try to kind of flip them so that they naturally kind of want to go up away from everything. If you can kind of see that. And that just, they, they already have a natural curve in them. And if you can spin them while you're soldering a little bit, you can kind of get them to go up and then you hold it. And then as soon as the solder um, cools off, it will hold hold that stance. So uh, that's how you get those terminals the way you like them. And then uh, up here, I just left everything. I'm going to probably do this later so I don't bug any of the adhesives. And then uh, go ahead and get those trimmed up. As you can see, I left quite a bit of slack. And when it's time, these just get folded over and soldered to these and then you cut off all the access. So uh, I'll check back in when I've gotten to that point. So after uh, getting all the glue done, get everything set in there, um, I went ahead and soldered the leads after I let it set up for a few hours. You just want to make sure that uh, you get a clean lead. There's copper coating on those, and uh, you got to clean that off before you can you can solder. Or it won't stick very well. And then what I did is I ran my tensils up through, took the leads and wrapped them around, and uh, then went went ahead and soldered, making sure that I still had a plenty of slack back here. So looks pretty good. So I'm just waiting up for the adhesives, and then I could start trimming these down. And I went ahead and I double checked that my connections are good by checking my ohms. This is fluctuating between uh, 3.7 and 8, and the other one did the same thing. So it's with intolerance to, intolerance to know that yes, this is a 4 ohm um, voice coil, and the other side should be the same. So now we have the uh, speaker cleaned up a bit. It's been sitting for quite a while. I'm not going to do too much with it because uh, I want it to sit for about 24 hours just to double check that all the adhesives are completely dry. It's still a little bit sticky and tacky, so uh, I'm not going to mess with it. But uh, I took the shims out just to check on everything. Um, finished up soldering. Put some adhesive glue in this little bottle onto the leads. I haven't clipped them yet because I'm just going to let it dry up and then top it off with a little bit extra glue before the dust cap goes on tonight. Uh, but I'm going to let it sit for a while and I'm going to test it on the little amp and just make sure it's doing fine. But I put, I uh, on my own, 
been doing that a little bit. It's very stiff, by the way. But I can't, I can't see any rubbing, nothing. It, it's completely lined up perfect, um, according to my little hand press, which, uh, when you press it by hand, it actually makes it more likely to scrape um, than if it was just running on the amplifier. So it just proves that uh, it's doing very well because I, I didn't get it to scrape by doing it by hand. That doesn't mean much, though. Um, we'll see once it gets in the uh, gets on an amp and we run it at around 60 hertz or so. We'll play a short little tone on low power. But uh, so yeah, that's the Rockford Files Gate HX2. Does have some of the wrong parts, but it works, and that's all that matters because I need some bass. But uh, this is just a quick tutorial on how to do it, and then when it's all done. Does that look good or not? I think it looks pretty good. Brand new speaker. Very beautiful. And then I have to put the uh, the rubber boot back onto the magnet. But uh, yeah, there you go. So we're going to let that set up for a while and then we'll go from there. So uh, now that the subwoofer has had time to cure the adhesives, um, I'm going to test the coils out make sure they're working. I put it on very low power because I'm running in free air and it's still a little bit soft. Um, the adhesives are still soft and the uh, amp is pretty powerful so I'm just going to run it real low at around 60 hertz. Just listen for anything going on in the, in the gap. You have to pick it up off the table of course it will make noise. And all you can hear is a, a 60 hertz bass tone really. No, no little grinding noises or chipping noises or rattles, except for my finger hitting the back of the cone every once in a while. But you can see now it's making noise. You gotta have it picked up to um, to do so because it'll it'll kind of rattle it itself. But uh, so that's the first voice coil. So let me pause this. We'll do the second one. Double check it's working. It's hard to do with one hand. Okay, so now for another 60 hertz test tone on the other coil. And again, it works. Pick it up. No noise. So the, uh, the speaker's gotten time to set up now, I've f tested it, made sure both coils are working. That's an important step because you don't want to seal this up and not have stuff working. I've uh, made sure these are all covered up with the adhesives and everything's working perfectly. So it's time to put the dust cap on and complete this woofer build. So what I've done is I've roughed up this edge with some sandpaper because it's a polypropylene cap, it'll help it adhere better. So the idea is, um, number one, when you do it, make sure it's lined up with your top and bottom of the speaker so it looks good. And then you're going to want to have handy like a roll of duct tape or something, and then something pretty heavy to stick on top of that when the adhesive starts drying. That's the only way you're going to keep your dust cap from moving around. Um, most of the time you have to center a dust cap and what you do is you'll put it where you think it is, measure, 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 and adjust until it's centered. You draw a line with a pencil and you can go from there. On this one it's got an indent. They, uh, they did a good job and helped me out. So it's easy. You just drop it in where it needs to go. To uh, make it easier what you do is take a piece of tape sticky side out, roll it up, stick it on here and you can use it as a handle to move your dust cap when it's uh, ready to put adhesive. So I'm going to lay a bead of adhesive, have the dust cap ready and then I'll see if I can't get a clip of that. <laughs> 